When I think about Singapore, the first thing I think about is the bustling of the people, the languages they speak, the various dialects, this mix of languages. I also think of the city life, the cars, the hectic nature of living in such a cosmopolitan city. To me, uh, what typifies the Singapore sound is the sound of the Garanguni man saying Garanguni and then along with that there is this rhythmic sound of his two-wheeled uh, newspaper lugging trolley that he drags it down the staircase. The kompang, which is a Malay drum, because this drum is heard everywhere from young at your void decks, uh, at weddings. It will be really loud and they will have a whole ensemble of these kompang players. They make so much sound that everybody in the neighbourhood will hear it. When Teng started becoming a full-time arts company, we did a version of Little White Boat Xiao Wai Tuan. And that piece actually became very viral, after which the Prime Minister singled us out at the period of time in his National Day rally. Mm. And then he said that we were a uniquely Singaporean sound. It was then that the idea went into my head and said, are we Singaporean? This was like a little bit identity crisis, you know. And so that idea actually sort of festered in my brain to say, what is the idea of a Singaporean sound? And from that, it birthed this whole entire project. Where we commissioned multiple Singaporean producers and arrangers from different generations, from different styles, different genres, different races, mm. who actually come together and they all contribute to this Singaporean sound. We deal with the topic head on, but we deal with it by actually giving freedom to various different composers to actually find their own identity. And in the process of looking for their own identity, we discover our own identity in Tang as well. Mm. So it's a loop process, and it's a win win. The problem with Tang is. <laughs> they are too nice. <laughs> they keep emphasizing again and again what is what you would want to do, what's your style. They really celebrate that rather than try to push me down. I think having that kind of frameless commission is really liberating. Like I didn't feel like I had to check some boxes. I think I can speak for most composers when I say that's really great because then we can really be ourselves. I felt like I'm dealing with people who have got military level precision. At the beginning, they also gave us quite a free leeway to listen to the, the track and kind of see where we would take it. And then once we hit like a direction that they liked, then the notes became really clear, so it was like, boom. But when I work with Teng, I think that's where I'm not trying to serve a client, I'm trying to serve a project. Mm. And that project is about creativity, it's about letting the imagination run, run wild. wild. I guess it's a good thing for me having served clients for most of my career. Just imagine as a kid, every day your mom says, oh, don't do this, don't do that. You're just kind of like, it's ingrained inside a kid, okay, you don't do this. <laughs> then suddenly you were given the freedom. Yeah, suddenly you just run, and in this case, like, oh my god, what's, what's happening? You know, it's almost that kind of feeling for me. I love like, kind of epic cinematic soundtrack. Remember in the 70s and 80s, mm. we were all like watching all those Hong Kong like, The Kung Fu drama. Yeah, all the Kung Fu drama. And remember I was like really fascinated with Tian Long Pa Pu. And obviously like one of the top like skills that Jing Yong kind of created is this Jiu Yang Shen Kong La. And I realized that that's, it mirrors kind of what music can do. Because music has unlimited power. You can actually go very extreme in actually bring people and audience on their journey. And it's how you actually harness that power and kind of bring the audience on a sensible journey. Lah. And also with Teng, Teng is about balance as well, you know, the yin and the yang. So everything is about harmony. Lah. So harmony, I thought, was going to be the last piece of our whole entire concert. And I thought that we needed to have a piece which showcased Teng's legacy over the years. I pulled together the pieces that we actually had in all albums, Stories from an Island City, all the way to Heirlooms for Forefathers project. And so we pieced together a little bit of a tapestry. This concert was called Qi Cheng Zuan He, of which the last He was basically harmony, where we put together everything. So it was a harmony of all the musicians playing together, harmony of all our albums working together, harmony of all our creatives within Tang working together. Mm. And I think I also made it a point that our young musicians, yeah. our third generation of Tang musicians, were also playing inside this ensemble along with the second generation, first generation of musicians. So you basically have three generations of Tang who are actually playing in this piece. I think Tang um, has, I would think, 
gone into a trajectory that we are always finding ways in which we can use music to actually help society. In the first album, we wanted to preserve Singapore's lost lullabies by reinventing and putting new life into them. Our second album, which was Forefathers, we wanted to remember our dialect music, which were dying and we were trying to inject new life into them. Here, with the Singaporean Composers Project and the, the concert that we are doing, we are giving platforms and putting ourselves into a national conversation of what a Singaporean sound is. We have a lot of talent here. We have a lot of original ideas. We're obviously exposed to a lot of different cultures. There's a lot to explore. I don't think we're doing enough of it. I think there's no one term that can encapsulate what Singaporean sound means. And to me, I think it is one that is involving and is sustained by meaningful relationships and trust built between creators and interpreters in Singapore. That for me is what a Singaporean sound is. I think everybody is working together through their own voices to create something that they can own together. And that's the Singapore sound. Exactly. Because it's, it's Singapore composers and Singapore musicians. And the intent Singapore is producers. so Singaporean as yeah. well. So commissioned by Singaporeans for Singaporeans as well first yeah. and then subsequently enjoyed by the rest of the world. Yeah. And I think and as a company, we need to proactively commission Singaporean companies. Correct, yeah. So, and we need to proactively build this canon of literature. Yeah. Maybe not for our generation, but for the generations after us, you see. Then they have something to be proud of. Yeah. In Singapore's environment, everyone says that those stop daydreaming. But for me, I encourage, I literally told my daughter, please do daydream once in a while. <laughs> Yeah, because it is when you dream that you actually get ideas, mm -hmm. that you actually think of the box. You actually start to think of the impossible. When I start to think of the impossible, that's where I get ideas of making it work. Yeah. And over the years, Tung has not only created artistic work, it has also created work that deals with um, the social side. It has also created work that deals with the industry development side. We give scholarships to underprivileged children. We create evidence-based music for people who are stressed and anxious using binaural beat technology. We also create evidence-based music where we play for clinical settings for people in uh, end of life or for example even in homes and hospices. So in many ways we have also found a niche for ourselves where Tum is an agency that uses music for the greater good of mankind. If we can actually manipulate our knowledge of music and we can help to solve some of society's problems, then I'm very glad to, to be able to do it. Mm -hmm.